Welcome to Flash from Scratch, tutorial number one, getting started. We're going to open the CS5 program. When it comes up, it comes up to what you see here. Uh, this is called the start page. And here are some pre-made, well, uh, templates, pre-made templates that you can look to get some ideas. Um, down here, it's recent, any recent um, FLAs, that's the flash files that I've used. Or I can go here and open and start a whole new file. I can also go up here, click here, and start a new one or open an existing file. Or one of those recent ones, which are these recent ones here. So you can either work from this start page or from this menu up here, which you're quite familiar with on most programs. D over here there's some learning to take place. You can come in here and once you learn some terms you can look for things. I've not found it overly good as compared to previous versions of Flash. They seem to be a bit sketchy on this CS5 one. And over here is your choices of action script 2 which is previous to CS5 and of course CS5 Action Script 3 which is the newest of them and if you don't ever want to use this which some people don't they just prefer to come up to this file click this little thing here and you won't get this coming up every time so now this is the way it's laid out when it starts so let's open a new FLA new and it's given me the option general and I want to be action script 3 that's what I want here's the width and the height sizes the preset 550 400 you can change those if you have a lot of animation and want a lot of a lot of length I usually use 700 and 550 and this is the frame rate how fast it shows each section of your of your video this is the color of what's called the background of your, your video. And if you want to change these and click this, that will be your default. So right now, I'm going to select all that. So I just click OK. And it opens up in this format. Now, yours may be slightly different than this arrangement. But we're going to make them a different way so that we can follow through my other videos up here under essentials see this little thing this is the name of this this layout of this workspace so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go down to something called classic click on classic and you can see it completely changed this is the format that previous flash versions have used and I like this this a lot a lot better I'm more used to it Okay, it completely changed because what I did is I changed the resolution on my on my monitor. I, I like this bigger this bigger font. Let's look at what's called some panels first. If you look over here to the to the left, this is called the tool panels. And they, they look familiar, like this is what's called the selection tool that allows you to select things. Uh, this is the lasso tool. We'll go we'll go through these later on. But because I made my resolution so small, there's things way down the bottom here I can't see. So I'm just going to click there till I get that double arrow and pull it to the right, and there it pops up. And this panel, this tool panel, up here are your drawing tools. These are like selecting tools and, and sizing tools. There's painting. There's a paint bucket. like That's a bucket of paint, an eraser. These are for making and zooming in on your stage. Here's your colors. This is the colors for the pencils when you draw. If you draw things that have colors inside, this will be the fill. This can switch these colors. And this s options down here, depending on what you have selected up here, you'll be offered different options down here. Over on this right-hand side, see these little double arrows? I can click that and open and close that panel. This is made up of two panels, really. This one called Properties, 
And if you look under these properties panel, it has things. Because I've nothing drawn, it's telling me about, about the work area that I'm working on. It's telling me I'm using Action Script 3. The player that it can be viewed on is 10-2. Uh, it's telling me that frame rate that we talked about, 24 frames per second. There's the size of what's called my stage. And here's the color. I can click this and this color swatch things come up. And I can move it around and pick up a color. And if I click it, that's the color my stage becomes. The stage being the working area. So I'll go back to white. Okay. Close that properties panel. This properties panel, by the way, is if you have a frame selected, it tells me about the frame. I can give that frame a name. If there's something special about that frame, it will tell me. If I quickly drew an object, there it is, and, and I pick up the selection tool and highlight it, it tells me about that object. It tells me it's called a shape. It gives me its X coordinate. That's this way. Its Y coordinate. That's this way. And it tells me its width and its height. Okay. It tells me that the outside of it is black and the inside is that crazy green and also tell me that this black is this point is one pixel wide so that's the properties panel so whatever you got selected you're going to learn about it there another important panel that comes up in this certainly in this classic is what's called your color panel so I click on that it opens the panel for colors I can change them if I had to select it and open that colors panel for example I can change the colors on it. it the color swash which we already seen I can pick different colors this is a a tool that allows us to put things on the stage where we're going to put them align them this is called the alignment panel where they're going to be with regard so if I highlight that again for example we're going to do this all again somewhere else I can center it to the stage now it's centered I can do its size and positioning here. I can rotate it here if it was something that could be rotatable. I can rotate it so many degrees. See that? And like most graphic programs, I can press Control Z and undo at any given time. Close that one. The other one that's the probably the one that gets used the most is this one here the library when you open that if this was a special type of object there's things called buttons there's things called uh, movie clips it would list them in here what they were in this in, the, in our library okay what else up here we have something called the timeline if I got set of timeline selected and that's this frame by frame by frame if we were doing animation, I'd have something in this frame, something in this frame, something in this frame. And it would progress as when you ran the program. It would progress through these frames right here, 24 frames per second. So that's where you put all your little events are going in there. Okay, let's look at this little button right here. We see 100%. That means that this is the size it would be if you had it on a web page. So if I click that. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, 50%. Now you see this white area? That's what would be seen if you turned this into a, a video and showed it to someone on Internet Explorer, something like that, or if you put it on a web page. That's what would be seen. So if I selected this box and put it out here, if I, if I put it up on the Internet, you wouldn't see it because it's not inside this box. If I test it, on the other hand, you may or may not see it because the test can show when you're just testing it you do see this outside area where you can actually store things the if I there's one more thing that I want to add under windows click this window thing I have a timeline selected you see that I have tools selected they're over there the properties is almost I think I believe a default I think the library is a default but regardless eventually you're going to use action so that's an important one. So I'm going to double click on that. Actions. It opens up. There it is. I'm going to make it smaller. 
and because if you're going to be writing code a lot, you'll want action scripts a lot, you'll want them. So grab it by this black and put it right there. And now it becomes part of this, this panel up here. So anytime you want it, so if you click here and open the actions panel, you could type some action code in here. So that could go into feet. Now, if I went back here to classic and said reset classic, I'm going to lose that. So here's what you got to do. You have to put that that's back in there. Open window. Get that action panel back. It's called docking it. Dock it there. Here it is. Now let's say I want to use that over and over and over. I would come up here and go into new workspace and give it a name and I called one test I believe. So now and it would come up test. Oh, I didn't do that. I have skip. There. Skip. See? That's there all the time. And whatever you last set this at, whatever the workspace, whether you did the classic or one in your own name or some other one, every time you open a program up now, it would open with this layout. So now what's the value in this? Well, you just got the things you need. So let's say you're working with it and somehow you move this down here and you move that over there and you got that stuck there and you got this Oh, and you can't straighten it out. So you go up to here, click on this, reset, skip, and boom, it goes back to where you want it. So the very first thing I suggest you do is take and make yourself a, a layout and save it. Now I want to get my window back from my action panel. There it is there, and I want to dock that into there. Close it. Get rid of it over here. Go back to the timeline. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And I hope you use what you learn.